In this video, we're going to finish up our min cost network flow problem, and in particular, we're going to be looking at the decision variables, objective function, and the constraints for a shortest path problem. So the previous video covered defining our nodes, arcs, net demand, and cost in our model and data files, and this time we're going to look at defining our objective function, our decision variables, and our constraints. So let's start with our decision variables. xij is equal to the amount of items sent from node i to node j. Now in relation to our problem that we're looking at, in this, in this model we have this entire network and there's actually a decision variable for each and every one of our arcs. So we see that we need to know how many llamas are going to be traveling from A to B, so there's an X sub AB. And we need to know how many are traveling from A to D, so there's an X sub AD. And there's an X decision variable for every single one of these arcs, so we know how much is traveling um, along the path from, e, from node I to node J. So if we were to put this in our model file, we would have an expression that looks like this, where it's a model.x is equal to var and then in parentheses, we'd say model.arcs, which tells PMO that we want to make a decision variable for every single one of the arcs that we defined. And then the last portion within non-negative reals tells PMO that we want all of these decision variables to be positive or non-negative. And the next portion that we're going to look at is defining this objective function. So we see that this objective function is summing all of the costs to travel along these arcs. And we would define that um, something like this. Where we'd see that the first part, the def objective underscore rule and in parentheses model colon, this sort of upper part here, this is defining our, our function that's going to make our expression. And then within this expression, we see that we have a sum, which in Piomo uses the word sum. And then we're adding up all the costs times how much we're sending along a certain arc. And then the range on this sum, in our formulation it says uh, we're summing over all i, j that are elements of arcs. And we actually say something very similar in PL mail. We say for i comma j in model dot arcs. And what this i comma j in model dot arcs is saying is it's saying look in our data file and for every combination that you see in our list of arcs, use those combinations. And then the last part uh, of our formulation says that it's minimizing and we specify that in our last line um, using the sense parameter. So we say sense equals minimize. We have to connect the function that makes our expression to our actual model. So we have this line that says model.totalCost and we say that it's an objective and the rule that it uses is our objective rule that we just defined above. So that's how we would define our objective function. And then the last part are these net demand constraints. And we're going to take a second to look at what these net demand constraints are doing. These demand constraints, we have one for every single node, i. So this first part says, everything that goes from some other node in the network to node i, we want to add that up. And we want to subtract everything that leaves that node that we care about. So everything that goes from i to some other node j, we want to subtract. And that result must equal our net demand for that node. So let's look at one particular node and see what's going on. Let's look at when i equals f. So let's look at what happens at node f. We could rewrite that expression just specifically for node f, where we'd say uh, 
we're going to sum everything that goes from some node k to node f. That's this first part here. So if we wanted to see what was going from somewhere else in the network to node f, we could see that we could get to node f from node b or node d. So this first part is summing up everything that's traveling from nodes b and nodes d to f. So that would be written as xbf plus xdf. And then the second part is subtracting the sum of everything that's leaving node f. We can see in our network that there's four ways to leave node f. We could go from f to e, from f to h, from f to k, and from f to i. So to fill in the second part, we would say, let's subtract off everything that's going um, from f to somewhere else in the network. And that better equal the net demand at node f, which in this case is zero, because we don't want anything hanging out at node f at the end of the problem. So if we were to put that into PLMO, we'd see something like this. where we're first going to go over defining the function that creates um, the expressions for us. And first off, we see that we have one of these constraints for every one of our nodes. So that's represented first because we're going to pass i to our function that's creating our expression. And we also see that when we're, we define our constraints, we're passing it uh, the set of model dot nodes. And then if we go through each one of these formulation components, we can see that we have in this first part a sum corresponds to the word sum in PMO. The thing that we're summing is x um, sub ki, which is very similar in PMO, except we use square brackets instead of subscripts. And this range of this sum is for all k, i that are elements of arcs. So here in PMO, this is a little bit lengthy. We essentially have to say we want to sum over all the different available nodes. So the first part says for k in model nodes. So we're going to look at all the possible nodes. And then the second part of this, if k, comma i in model arcs says, even though we're looking at all the nodes, we actually only want to add up the ones that go from k to the node that we care about right now, i. And then the next part, uh, we have another sum, which is indicated by the word sum. Again, we're adding up x um, with some subscripts. This time, subscripts are i, j. So in, in this part, we put our subscripts in square brackets. And then the range on this sum says for all i, j that are elements of arcs. And to say that in Pioma, we have to say first um, that j is looking at all of our possible nodes. But then, but then we want to narrow that down to say, but we really only care about uh, the nodes where um, we're going from our node of interest i to node j. So the if i, j in model arc says, but we only care about the nodes that go from the node we care about to some other place in the network, j. And then finally, the equals net demand sub i. In PMO, we say equals equals net demand and then, and then in square brackets, i. And that becomes our net demand constraints. And then the last thing to do is to solve the model. So if we were to solve this, our command line prompt would look something like um, what you see there. And our results, um, in our results, we would see that we'd have an x variable. And our x variable, there's one for every single one of our, our roads in our network. And then we can see that the roads that we actually travel on end up with a value of 1. For example, we travel on ro the road A to D, and then we travel from D to G, which also has a value of 1. We travel from G to J, which has a value of 1. And then finally, we reach our destination by traveling from J to Z. Uh, 
Um, and finally, we can see that our total cost for that row would be 26. And that concludes our min cost network flow, network flow pro problem in PML.